We're going to teach you a lot of repentance that you, the Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, and the Indians, you are the chosen people of the Most High. That's right. Give me the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5. Because a lot of the time, a lot of you are coming up and you're coming up with your own understandings. But you don't have to listen. When you come up here, don't be coming up with your own doctrines, your own understanding, your own opinions. Just listen. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all, with all thine heart. Read that again, slowly, slowly. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Meaning, trust in the law, statutes and commandments. Don't trust in your own understanding. Trust in the Lord and what he is telling you. Read. And lean not unto your, thine own understanding. And lean, on, on, on lean not unto what? Lean not unto thine own understanding. Again, do not lean on your own understanding because your own understanding is garbage. You understand? When it comes to law, statutes and commandments, that's all you need. Your questions when you come up here should be related to your salvation and what is going to get you delivered by the black Messiah. You understand? Read that one more time. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. And listen, when you, when you, you need to understand that we've been destroyed for so many years that we keep ourselves in this destroyed state because we have a rebellious mind. But listen to what the Most High is going to tell you. Give me the book of Hosea chapter 6 verse 1. Because we need to return to the... been edified to you before we are a holy people we are righteous we are sanctified but we need to return and repent to the most high's laws read that the book of hosea chapter 6 and verse 1 come and let us return unto the lord let us return to the lord as a nation because we've tried every different strategy you understand to fight against our oppressor and it hasn't worked you understand we came up with the black panthers we came up with the, under, uh, the NAACP. We've come up with all these different black organizations, but we seem to fail. Because the only way we are going to be delivered from our enemies is by returning to the Lord. Read that again. That's right. Come and let us return unto the Lord. Listen to the catch. Listen to the catch. For he has torn and he will heal us. Who has torn? He has torn and he will heal us. Wait, no, no. I thought the European man torn us. I thought he was the one that destroyed us. Who torn us? For he has torn and the Lord has torn us. You understand? Everything that we went through as a people, going through slavery, in the transatlantic slave trade, that was the Lord because of the wickedness of our heart. Read. For he has torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us. So the same one that has destroyed us in slavery is the same one that is going to deliver us, which is Christ, the Black Messiah. That's right! Now, get me the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Because coming back to the laws of God, there's a lot of sacrifice that we have to make. A lot of us are too comfortable with the world. That's the reason why I'm preaching now, and a lot of you are just walking. Because you're not interested. A lot of you are probably going to go home, think about your money, think about all the cars you got, Thinking about the female that you're going to deal with tonight. But guess what? The most high, if you're going to serve him, you've got to sacrifice all of that. Read. The book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. We should present our bodies as what? A living sacrifice. We have to sacrifice our bodies, meaning our flesh. We have to get rid of that sinful mind and come back to the Most High's laws. We have to repent. If you want to, if you want the oppression to stop, if you want it to cease, you have to repent. Read. Holy, acceptable unto God. Holy, holy. Get me what unholy in Romans chapter 7, verse 4. Because as, the, as you have been edified prior, the word holy means to be sanctified, means to be righteous means to be a law keeper you understand let's get that let's get that the book of romans 
chapter 7 and verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy. The law is what? The law is holy. The law is holy. So when we bring out the law and you take heed to that, that is how you become holy. Not going to church talking about holy, holy is the Lord. Then you're going out throughout the week dealing in all sorts of wickedness. No, when you hear the laws of God, that is what makes you holy. Read. And the commandment, holy and just and good. See that? That's what makes you good. That's what makes you righteous. But a lot of you think that you're justified in your own works because of your own understanding. You're leaning on your own understanding and that is going to get you killed. You are going to die. I'm just going to say it point blank. If you do not want to keep the laws, statutes and commandments, the end judgment is death. Yes, what? Read. Verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy. Hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. Hey, bro. In the, in the blue jumper, listen to the word of, the word of the Lord. This is your salvation. Read. Wherefore, the law is holy. I'll go back to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. So if you are a black, Hispanic, or native Indian, and you can bear witness that your ancestors went... Get, get me the sign. Oh, that, oh. No, in fact... So if you can bear witness that your, that your ancestors went through slavery, the blacks and the Hispanics and native Indians, then this truth is for you. So listen up. The book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Hold on, it is our reasonable service. Meaning that is the duty of the Israelite and Israelite, sorry, the Israelite man and the Israelite woman. Keeping the laws of God is our reasonable service. The only reason why we're on this earth is to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Yeah, sure. And nothing else. Read. And be not conformed to this world. Sisters, 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 come, come learn. Come learn about who you are according to the law. Because I'm telling you, the only way that you are going to receive the kingdom, the only way you are going to receive peace is by keeping the laws. You can walk away, but I'm telling you, I know that in your spirit, what we are teaching you is the right thing. Read verse 2. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to what? To this world. Read. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Yes, it's not easy. It is going to be hard. It is going to be a battle. Because for the amount of years that you've been in the world and you've been destroyed by the wickedness that your oppressor has taught you, it's not going to be easy to unwind from that. But like I said before, trust in the Lord and he will redeem you from all that evil that's in your head. Read it again. And be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Read that one more time. One more time. One more time. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. Because a lot of our people are conformed to this world. Let me tell you something. Nothing has changed. You are still in slavery. You are still hated. You are still looked at as a nigger. You are still looked at as a spick. You are still looked at like a good for nothing. But for some reason, a lot of our people think that we are loved by our enemies. No, that's deception. You, we are a hated people. That's right. That's right. Do you understand? We only have ourselves and the most time to defend us. That's we, right. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, brothers and sisters. The black man, the Hispanic man, the native Indian man. We have to change. Do you understand? Because if we don't change, then the most, then the most is not going to send his son to deliver us out, out from this captivity. We're going to stay here and the oppression is going to continue. Do you understand? We have to change. Because guess what? The most has got something great for our people. A kingdom, an everlasting kingdom. That's right. Let me that in uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. I'm going to show you this Bible. I don't know what they've been teaching you in the Christian church, but guess what? If they started teaching you that a black man and a Hispanic man, a native Indian man, has, is, has access to the rulership of the whole world, trust me, your pastor's going to lose a lot of money. 
Read. The book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 18. But the saints of the Most High. But the saints of the Most High. Let's find out who the saints are. Because a lot of you just think the saints are the good Christians, those that attend the Catholic Church. No. We're going to show you who the saints of the Most High, Most High are according to the Bible. Read. The book of Psalms. Chapter 148 and verse 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints. Let's find out who the saints are. Even of the children of Israel. Who are the saints? Even of the children of Israel. Who are the saints? The children of Israel. The children of Israel. The black Hispanic man named Indian man. We are the saints of God. Now let's see what the gift, what the prize is if we keep the commandments being the saints of God. Read. Go back to Daniel uh, 7 18. The book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. We shall what? Shall take the kingdom. No, no, we're going to beg for the kingdom. We're going to beg. We're going to go to our enemy and we're going to beg, beg on our knees. Please give me the kingdom. We want the king. No, we're not begging. We are taking the kingdom. That's right. Read that right. again. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever. No, for temporarily. Forever. It, wait, wait, forever? Forever, even. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Right. We are going to rule our, over our oppressors forever. That's right. That's a beautiful thing right there. That is a beautiful thing. I'm telling you. A lot of you, a lot of you believe that. A lot of you believe that you that there's salvation in Christianity. A lot of our people believe that there's salvation in Islam. But I'm telling you where the salvation is. The salvation is in keeping God's commandments. That is the only way. Let's get more repentance. Give me Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Because you need to understand. We need to come back. And listen. Remember the Most High is only dealing with a certain few. That's who we're looking for. We're looking for the elect of the Lord. Those that are passing by. Mocking us. Laughing. When Christ comes to judge you. It's not going to be funny then. There's going to be a lot of sadness and sorrow. So listen to the word that we're telling you. Listen to the warning. Read. The book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. We have to repent and we have to convert our minds from this world. We have to learn to love our neighbor. We have to learn how to marry our sisters and not deal with them unrighteously. You understand? We have to deal with our neighbor the way the Most High told us to. Do you understand? Because unity is a great thing. That's what the Most High wants from us. Until we unite as a people, the Most High is not going to deal with us. Let me Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. So listen up. Because it's a serious thing. Judgment is coming to the earth. A lot of you think that when Christ comes back, he's going to give you like hugs and kisses. No. Haha, <laughs> you ain't doing that. Trust me. Read. The book of Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Do what? Gather yourselves together. Read. Yea, gather together. O nation not desire. What did the Most High call us? He called us a nation not desire. Because when, we, when it comes to the Most High, the Most High understands that these nations hate us. Do you understand? So he's saying, listen, that integration theory that has been taught to you by your enemy, that is a fallacy. That is a lie. The Most High wants us to gather together. Not to gather together in sin, but to gather together in righteousness. Read. Gather yourselves together. Ye gather together, O nation not desire. Read on. Before the decree bring forth. Read on. Before the day pass as the shaft. Read on. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. So we have a certain time limit to get ourselves right. Do you understand? But the problem is, a lot of our people, we're comfortable. Do you understand? We're comfortable in our sin. 
We do not want to sacrifice the wickedness and sin that we're doing on a day to day because we love it. It's pleasurable. But guess what? That pleasure is going to get you killed if you don't get your mind right. That's right. We have a time limit, brothers and sisters. Do you understand? Get your mind right. Yeah. And guess what? A lot of you, you're praying and wishing that Christ comes back. But trust me, you're not ready for the black Messiah. You are not ready. Right. That's the reason why he said this. Get me the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 18. Because a lot of you, a lot of our, our people in the Christian church especially, you talk about grace. We're always talking about grace. Teach. Not even understanding what grace means. You understand? I just told you we have a certain time period before the Most High brings judgment upon this earth. Jeez. You understand? So get your mind right, read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 18. And therefore will the Lord wait. The Lord's going to do what? And therefore will the Lord wait. And we're going to find out why the Lord is going to wait. Read. That he may be gracious unto you. That he may be what? That he may be gracious unto you. The Lord is going to wait for his people to repent so we can be gracious unto you. So we can be merciful unto you. Because if the Most High has to send his son now to judge the earth, a lot of our people are going to get put to death. And the Most High doesn't want to do that. He does want to have mercy. He does want you to repent. But there will come a time where the mercy that he gives you is going to run out. Really? And therefore he will be exalted and that he may have mercy upon you for the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. Now, the Most High is a God of judgment. Because guess what? You know the judgment that needs to take place on the earth? Is the deliverance of the black, Hispanic and native Indian man. That's, right. That's the deliverance. That's the salvation. Not all nations going to be saved. Only one nation on the earth is going to be saved, and that is the Israelite man. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.